So let's try to uh, get some review on what we're going to compute. Okay, so we want to compute the expectation of x. And this is the, the definition. Okay, so let's recall this definition for a little bit. So it's the expectation of x equals to... Uh, so we look at all the value of x, okay, and you you take the average. But it's not just as, as some any average. Uh, we, we weigh it... Uh, we add out each uh, value, possible value of x by the probability that we're going to get this value. So the expectation is roughly the weighted uh, average of the value of x. Okay, weighted by the probability that you're going to get that value. Okay, so if you want to use this uh, definition to compute E of x, where x is the number of empty bins, we need to somehow figure out this uh, this term, right? So let's try to uh, do that for a little bit to get some feel of how this approach would work out. Okay, so if we... Uh, uh, so let's think about probably that x equals 0. Uh, so this is the case when all the bins, there's no empty bins, right? So this is what we did in one of the homework right and that's uh, the probability for that is is uh, so how, how many ways can n balls fall into exactly n bins and with no empty bins so so then there are n factorial ways outcomes in this event okay since there are n to the n uh, sample space so this is the probability that uh, you're gonna get uh, x equals zero, okay? And and this this is really small, uh, fairly small, okay? And um, so what's the, the probability that you get exactly one empty bin? Okay, so need you need to compute the outcome, right? So let's think about this so that's one that's there are so we, we we're gonna figure this out uh, roughly so there are n n uh n bins right so there are n choice to pick so you need to pick empty bins right so there are n ways okay so for each of the ways that you pick empty bin uh you need to make sure, suppose you pick this one, okay, so this guy is empty, so you put the cap on it. And you need to make sure that the rest of the bo the bins get some ball, right? You, you you cannot just, yeah, okay, I'll throw the bin, I'll, I'll, I'll throw the balls, right? Because maybe th there might be some other empty bin. So, uh, there will be uh, exactly one bin with two balls, okay? So the next step, you need to uh, pick another bin to get two balls right and then you need to pick these two balls and then the rest of the balls will get uh, go to this empty bin, this bin right without it can be empty right so that's that's how it goes and and if you want to really analyze this it it, it it is quite involved right now if you want to compute p x equal to it will get even more you know get even worse right so, if you have time, you should think about this question a little bit and try to convince yourself that it become nearly impossible to analyze p x equals two, p x equals three, and and so on. So, um, because the events on, on the bins are independent, I mean, in a fairly complicated way. So this the approach of using. So if you just use uh, the definition of the expectation to compute the expected number of empty bins, it will be really, really difficult to do so, okay? So, so uh, how are we going to deal with that? So we have these tools, okay? We'll prove this tool later on, but this, this tool will be really, 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 really important to us. Um, so this, is this, this theorem or this property of random variables is called, is called linearity of expectation. So you've heard this word again and again for maybe a, a thousand times. Uh, so if you have x and y be a random variables, so we, we have that the, the expectation of the sum, 
equals the sum of the expectation. So this might look silly, but it is really powerful. Okay. So if you think about uh, probabilities, okay. So you have two event A and B. You if you have a union of the probabilities, you cannot just say uh, it is equal to P B plus P A plus P B, right? You can only say this uh, in general. This is not equal, right? It it is only equal only when these two events are mutually exclusive, right? But but we've seen before in many cases we have you know independence event or sometimes we have dependent event that are not mutually exclusive. So we cannot just say hey uh, let's analyze each e event separately, okay? Like this because usually not these two terms are not equal, right? But this uh, this linearity of expectation. Uh, the the great thing about it is that it holds in any condition on the random variables. It holds even even these two random variables are are dependent. Okay, so uh, this allows us to do many th you know interesting things. Okay, so let me finish this segment by leaving you thinking about how to compute the the expectation of x using the the help from the linearity of expectation. Okay, so this linearity of expectation sort of allow you to uh, break down the the larger the sum of the expected uh, of the random variables. Okay, so if you have a random variable which is a, which is a sum of something, you can break it down and analyze them separately and just add them up. Okay. So uh, the question of this segment is that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you think about this. Uh, try to think about this for maybe a few minutes, uh, 10 minutes or something. And then you see the answer in the next segment. Okay, see you in the next segment.